Good morning and welcome to UCD's centenary event for Kevin Barry. I'm joined today by Mary Daly, Emeritus Professor of History at University College Dublin, Shifra O'Donovan, author, and Eunan O'Halpin, Emeritus Professor of History at Trinity College Dublin. The title of my paper is Kevin Barry in Memorial and Memory. In exploring the many facets of Kevin Barry's life, death and legacy, I want to examine what Kevin Barry meant to his fellow students at UCD from the time of his capture to the decades after his death in 1934, when his former classmates and comrades succeeded in installing a lasting memorial to him in the form of a stained glass window dedicated in his honor. In the last weeks of Kevin Barry's life, we get a vivid glimpse into the state of feeling among the students in UCD from the diary of Celia Shaw, then a final year in her BA degree at UCD. Although she barely knew Kevin in life, she demonstrated deep sympathy for him as he awaited death in protesting and praying for his reprieve up until his execution. She recorded how there were, and I quote, terrible stories current of how the poor fellow was being tortured in Mount Joy to make him reveal the names of his companions. I never experienced anything like the surging fury which the news produced in everyone. Kevin was to be hanged on Monday, and on Sunday we all went to Mount Joy where Father Albert Bibby said the rosary. It was dreadful kneeling before the grim gaunt walls and knowing the tragedy which would take place the next day. Father Albert gave Kevin's last message to the university student and to the second medicals in particular. It was an exhortation to fight for a cause for which he was dying. And yet, all that day, we hoped for a reprieve. The morning of Kevin Barry's execution, the tricolour was flown at half-mast over UCD, and the Crown forces then raided the college, taking away the college register, and in it, the names and addresses of all students. This provoked a great shuffling of digs, as students active in republicanism in one way or another moved about to evade capture. The official reaction from the students of UCD was rapid and spontaneous. The Student Representative Council passed a vote of sympathy for Kevin Barry the day after his execution and simultaneously resolved to print memorial cards to be printed out of a fund collected from students and professors of the college to commemorate the life of Barry. Almost immediately, the decision was made to erect a memorial in Barry's honor and a Kevin Barry Memorial Committee was established. The sale of memorial cars raised 25 pounds and within a year, a total of 125 pounds and 10 shillings had been raised for the memorial. On the 3rd of May, 1921, a meeting of the Kevin Barry Memorial Committee resolved to issue a new appeal for funds to the students, coupling the name of Frank Flood with that of Kevin Barry and that the money so collected be appropriated for erecting a suitable memorial to Kevin Barry and Frank Flood. J.V. Burke, the founding honorary secretary of the Kevin Barry Memorial Committee noted how, when several other UCD students were killed fighting on both sides of the Irish Civil War, their, supported, their supporters wanted to have their names incorporated in the memorial also. While Burke records that the committee agreed to include Flood's name, it seemed the idea of making a memorial to all UCD students who had fallen up to and including the Irish Civil War was abandoned. The Civil War had caused the committee to fall into abeyance and it was censured in 1923 for inactivity. In 1924, under the leadership of Michael Mac O'Reilly, the idea of a memorial was revived. O'Reilly proposed the idea of a stained glass window to the president of UCD, Dennis Coffey and Coffey declared himself agreeable to the idea, but the governing body of UCD turned it down for, and I quote, political reasons, according to Burke's records of these events. Subsequent to this, suggestions were made for alternative forms of memorial, and these included a statue, a bust, a tablet, a monstrance and vestments, a prize or scholarship, an arch, a sword to be presented to the college's OTC, a door for the new medical building, a bookcase in the college library, or a portrait in oils. However, the stained glass window remained at all times the preference of the committee, and they held out in their desire to realise it. Reluctance from the college authorities stalled efforts to commission a memorial throughout the 1920s.
However, the campaign received a boost in 1932 when Mac O'Reilly was elected to the governing body of the NUI on a platform which included the realization of the memorial project. Youth and the sacrifice of youth is one of the overriding themes in the memorial to Kevin Barry as it was commissioned. The chair of the Kevin Barry Memorial Committee, John V. Burke, emphasized the centrality of youth to the memorial in a press statement written in 1934 prior to the unveiling of the window. Here he stated that, and I quote, the underlying idea of the subjects of the window is to depict incidents from Irish history showing the contribution of the bravery and intellect of Irish youth to the progress of our country, culminating in a panel commemorating the sacrifice of his life by Kevin Barry. The studio of Harry Clark was chosen to execute the commission and the artist was Richard King. The eight panels of the Kevin Barry Memorial window depict in order the death of Cúcullin, the death of Turlock, son of Brian Baru at Clontarf, the capture of Hugh O'Neill and Hugh O'Donnell, the destruction of the Williamite siege train at Ballinetti by Patrick Sarsfield, the death of Lord Edward Fitzgerald with portraits of Wolf Tone and Robert Emmett, the rallying of insurgents by James Moore Lett, the boy rebel of 13 years who led the decisive charge in the Battle of New Ross in 1798, before depicting the leaders of the 1916 Rising with a burning GPO in the background. The final panel depicts Kevin Barry in volunteer uniform, unarmed save his pocket knife and whistle. Insets include the scene of his arrest at Monk's Bakery, surrounded by armed British soldiers, a Celtic cross motif, and the crests of UCD and Fianna Erin, the Republican youth movement. The window was unveiled on the 14th anniversary of Barry's death in 1934. At its unveiling, UCD president Dennis Coffey called for unity of the parties in Ireland, while Mac O'Reilly used the occasion to call for a united Ireland. Meanwhile, one of Kevin's old IRA comrades, Father John F. Harrington, who had come down from Belfast for the occasion, addressed the audience. He alone noticed, noted the absence of Kevin's friend and fallen comrade Frank Flood from the window. If memory was one side of Kevin Barry's legacy, then what had been forgotten, unconsciously or deliberately, along the way was the other side of the coin. In becoming a martyr, Kevin Barry had become a symbol, one that was more powerful when held aloft alone, set to a backdrop of romanticized Irish history. Behind all this were the young men and women who had known Kevin Barry as a student when they were all in their teens and early twenties. They had been confronted by their own mortality through his execution. They remembered him alongside Frank Flood and the students who had died tragically in the Civil War, not as symbols, but as classmates or comrades in a more personalized, intimate and authentic form of memory.